Namaste. Welcome to this short yoga video about developing strength in your arms, shoulders, chest, upper back, um, basically the upper body. Uh, so today we're going to do a little warm up and then I'm going to show you some things that you can do to improve the stability of your shoulders and the strength in your arms and upper body in general. So let's start with a little Kati Chakrasana, a little soft bend in the knees, lifting from the soles of the feet to the crown of the head and gently twisting from side to side. And it's good to start with some movement because uh, we want to develop strength with muscles that are ready um, instead of absolutely cold. So you can do yin yoga with cold muscles and restorative, but if you're doing anything uh, vigorous or demanding, you want your muscles to be prepared for movement. Here we're keeping the shoulders nice and soft, the arms relaxed, the fingertips, oh sorry, fingers in general, lightly curled. If you wish to, you can move on your feet as well. Keeping the center of the body lifted, the crown of the head, the belly muscles gently engaged. And then if you wish to, you can add a little bounce in the knees, you don't have to. And just check that any tension you're holding across the neck and shoulders has an opportunity to release, to let go, or to soften at least. And when you're ready, gently swaying back to center. Here in the center, uh, just a quick roll of the shoulders in each direction. We're going to do a neck limbering. If you don't like the one I choose here, choose one that suits you. Standing tall, drawing the chin towards the chest, and then gently and slowly rolling the right ear to the right shoulder, and chin to chest, and left ear to left shoulder. And going a little bit from side to side, nice and steady, not fast, just experiencing those connections through the sides of the neck into the top of the shoulders, the chest and the back, maybe under the jaw, under the ear or behind the ear into the scalp, side of the face. And if you wish to, you can roll in circles, that's entirely up to you feeling those connections down the front of the throat and the back of the neck a little bit more. And rolling the opposite way as well. So limbering the neck because the neck and shoulders and arms are so uh, closely linked, they work together so much. It's good to release here too. Chin to chest, smiling gently, bring your head to an upright position. And then here, we'll just do a little uh, more vigorous shoulder limbering, fingertips on shoulders, and then with your chin slightly up, doing a backwards, a backstroke kind of movement, circling the shoulders back one at a time, keeping a gentle lift in the belly muscles. You can maybe feel the sides of the body, the chest and the upper back are much more involved in this movement. And then when you're ready, you can do the opposite. So chin ever so slightly down, feeling perhaps that space between the shoulder blades as you do a front crawl type of movement. Again, still lifting in the belly muscles. And then when you're ready, you can come to standing upright, release your arms down, just give your shoulders a couple of shrugs. Now, if you feel that you need more, then you can absolutely pause the video at this point and do a little bit more warming up. The only thing that I'm going to add to this is a little shake out of the wrists and then gently easing the fingertips of one hand back towards the body, beginning to find length in that arm without lifting the shoulder. Taking a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And then the same thing on the other side, just easing the fingertips back a little, a gentle stretch. Maybe it's a strong stretch for you easing into that arm without lifting the shoulder, just to open this uh, inside part of the wrist, which can sometimes make the wrists a little bit more comfortable when we wait there on them. So again, working gently with your body always. Okay, so the first uh, thing that we're going to do is a little drill for the upper back. 
And to take the arms nice and wide, so we make a V shape or a Y shape, you might think, or an X shape if you've got your arm, legs really far apart. And then looking either side, making sure that your hands are at the sides of your body, so not in front and not behind, but at the sides of the body. Guide your elbows in towards your upper waist, but keeping your arms wide and your hands, palms facing forwards. And again, trying not to let the hands drift forwards or the hands drift too far back. We're going to breathe in in our V Y shape position and breathe out, drawing the elbows down. Try not to counterpose with your chin or your chest. So trying to keep the body in line, a little lift in the belly muscles will really help lengthen the back of the neck. Breathing in. And breathing out. We're going to do another five. Breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. It's like you're resisting the pull of the elbows down with the rest of the body. Breathing in, breathing out. Last one. Breathing in, breathing out. Relax the arms down and just note if that feels like uh, you've made effort in your body and from hopefully uh, for most of us that will feel like it's been quite a strong effort in the upper back and maybe across the arms and the shoulders themselves. If you need to give your arms a little bit of a, a flop, a flop, a wriggle, a jostle. Um, I find that wrapping the arms around the body helps to release any effort left over in those muscles behind the body. And then the next practice that we're going to do is similar, um, again, for stabilizing the upper back and uh, strengthening the upper back. We're going to bring the hands behind the head, but not touching the head, elbows nice and wide, and then take the hands out to the sides, turn the palms back and bring the backs of the hands behind the buttocks or hips, but without touching the back. So we're going to reach out and up, palms are facing forward, but not touching the back of the head. Out and down, palms facing backwards, fingertips not touching the back of the body. Okay, so reaching out and up and out and down. You can do this with your breath as well if you want to. Out and up, out and down. So this is us on four. We're going to do another six and keeping the elbows nice and wide, keeping the uh, chest lifted, the belly muscles working, and that length in the back of the neck. Very good. This is us on seven, I think. Who knows? Of ten. Let's call this eight. And then if we've done an extra one, it doesn't matter. And if we've done one fewer, next time you do it, you can add one. Very good. And I've been talking now, so I don't know. We'll make this the last one. Super. And then just reaching the arms wide, settling the shoulders and floating the palms down to the sides, giving your shoulders a little bit of a roll. And hopefully, again, you can feel that, um, that you've done, it, done some work, that your muscles have been really activated and engaged. Smashing stuff. <clears throat> so the traditional way to build upper body strength, of course, was the press up. Um, and we've probably most of us experienced this at school or in PE classes or something similar over the course of the years. But for lots of people, particularly if you don't practice press ups a lot, then you can find that they're quite a challenge to do from the floor. So this practice is to be done on the wall. Um, so if you come to the wall, but you don't uh, come all of the way to the wall, so we want to be about a, a reasonable step away from the wall so that when you lean towards the wall, you've got some of your body weight on your hands. Now you can come a little bit closer to begin with and build up to working back to a point where you're holding more of your body weight. And here, when we do the press up position here by the wall, you want your feet to be a reasonable distance apart. So you've got quite a wide base. So really close together isn't, isn't useful and it will just make it harder to make the motion. So uh, about hip width or shoulder width apart. 
And we're going to do it two ways. So the first way, we're going to put the hands on the wall with a fingertip slightly turned in around about chest height. And I like to be on my tiptoes for this, but you can equally do it well from your soles of your feet if you like. So about chest height, fingertips turned slightly in, <clears throat> lengthening through the crown of the head, and then doing a press up motion. You're not trying to get to the wall, you're trying to get your elbows bent um, about halfway and then pressing out. So pressing towards the wall and pressing out. And if you want to, once you're in the motion, give yourself a little bit more body weight. You just move your feet back a little bit so that you're supporting more of your weight on your hands as you come in and out from the wall. And for most of us, this is quite accessible. Um, even chair yogis manage this just fine. So we'll do three more, which should be around about 10. Aiming for about 10 of each of these. And now I can't remember, so I'm going to do one more. <laughs> I'm having one of those days. Super duper. And then just resting for a moment with the arms down by the side. If you need to, give your wrists a little roll, or you can even bring the backs of the hands together to roll through the wrists. And you can give your shoulders a little roll as well. Should, be, should feel quite nice. And press-ups are good because they actually strengthen our pectoral muscles, and particularly for... Uh, ladies as we age that can be quite nice because it keeps things from going too far south and if you know you know and that's as far as I, I, I'm going to go with that statement okay so with their hands turned in this is very much more uh, to do with the pectoral muscles but we're going to also do this with their fingers straight and then it's much more about the arms themselves um, and perhaps the shoulders a little bit as well so same position, but this time with the fingertips pointing straight up instead of pointing in. Try to keep your elbows quite close to your body. So your elbows bend down instead of out to the side as you come in and out. And again, if you want to, you can move your feet back a little bit. Just lengthening the arms, bending the elbows and do what you can. Keep lift in the belly muscles and length in the crown of the head, the back of the neck, and you'll find that the body is easier to move in and out from the wall. Very good. We'll do three more because, of course, there's no counting, but aiming for about 10. And if you can do five of these or three of these instead, and that's fine. Just stick with it, build up a little bit at a time. With some daily practice, you'll find you can increase the number that you do quite quickly over the course of several weeks, and you'll suddenly find doing 10 is just like breeze. Fantastic stuff. So again, giving your shoulders a little wriggle, maybe your wrists a little shake out. And if you're a chair yogi who's been joining us doing this, then fantastic, your workout is almost complete. Um, but then we'll be moving to the floor and pro probably that's just for mat yogis. So I would like to do the, the V, W with the wall as well. So if you come over to the wall and then just reaching the arms out to the side, allow your head to rest against the wall, your heels or the calves or the buttocks against the wall, the hands against the wall, the backs of the shoulders against the wall. And then here, keeping that a gentle lift in the belly muscles, glide your elbows towards your upper waist, your hands wide, try to keep the hands or fingers on the wall, and then reaching wide again. So just doing five of these, and you'll find that you can't cheat when you use the wall. So it's maybe a little bit more, um, demanding or a little bit more challenging and it's okay to do just a few or to see say actually I need to do the freestanding ones first for a little while before I practice there. I think that the shadows that I've got with these lights here make that a bit blurry back there so just doing your best to interpret. So if you're a chair yogi you're going to bug out at this point, do some nice stretching, hugging, deep breath, and making sure that you do the other side. 
maybe holding for a few breaths and then some gentle rolls and keep your body moving. So if you find stiffness as a result of doing these strengthening exercises, which is perfectly possible, then instead of trying to hold your body away from the discomfort of stiffness, just move gently in it. Move gently, keep the muscles a little pliable, a little softer, more supple, and they will release more readily. But if you are really struggling with DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness or stiffness, which usually comes the day after a practice or two days after a practice, a warm bath with Epsom salts is ideal as a way to release. Okay, and some vitamin D actually. Vitamin D, very good for pain. Okay, so we're gonna come down to the mat, mat yogis who are with me still, to do a supported press up. So we're going to do this from a plank pose, but then also drop the knees. So coming into your plank pose, again, we're going to start with the fingertips turned ever so slightly in. And we want to be really pressing the heels away. So making sure that your shoulders are over your hands there or thereabouts, not the hands behind the shoulders. And then in this position, firm in the belly, just drop your knees down to where they reach. So you're still quite long in the body. And then here, looking slightly ahead of your hands, bending your elbows out to the side, coming about halfway down and then lifting. And it's just the elbows that are moving. The rest of the body is held under your muscle tension. So you're lifting and uh, containing in your center, strengthening. You can even press into your knees and your toes. And you can do up to about 10 of these whatever feels good. Nice and lifted in the belly muscles as well. And when you've had enough, just settle yourself back onto your heels for a little child's pose. And you can extend that child's pose, bringing the forehead towards the floor, leaving the hands where they are, or support the forehead on the backs of the hands if you prefer. Take just a couple of deep breaths. These are a little bit more challenging. It is okay to stick with the wall-based practice for quite a long time before you come to do these on the mat. When you're ready, if you're doing the next uh, practice, and there's just one more of these and then a dolphin. Um, so for the next practice, we're going to have the fingertips pointing directly forward. You can have your hands a little bit wider than your body, which will give your shoulders a bit more room to move. So pressing through the heels, lengthening through the crown of your head and also lifting in the belly, just drop the knees only to the mat. If it helps, you can slightly tuck under your tailbone, scooping your belly a little bit further in and then bending your elbows straight back. So they're quite close to your side, you don't have to pin them in and then halfway down and all the way up, halfway down, all the way up and just Keep this moving for as long as you can. It's a little bit like our knees, chest, forehead action in uh, sun salutations. And you don't need to go any further than halfway down, even in Chaturanga, which is the advanced variation of this. And when you've had enough, just settling yourself back again into that uh, child's pose, or you can rest flat on your belly. Here, if you want to give your arms a little bit of length, you can leave your elbows on the floor and bring the palms of the hands to the back of the neck or the upper back, taking a few deep breaths and that would just lengthen those spaces across the triceps, the underarms. Let go of anything you're holding onto with your breath. And when you're ready, you can come up into a kneeling position. So we're going to finish our strength for the upper body uh, little short here with some dolphin pose. And we're going to do dolphin two different ways. The first way is strengthening for the upper chest, the upper back, the arms, the shoulders, the triceps particularly. And the second way is actually more strengthening through the center of the body, but they are both good for the arms. So crossing your arms at your elbows, holding onto your upper arms as closely as you can into that space between the 
first finger and the thumb. And then when you put your elbows down, you don't want your elbows to get any wider than they are right now. They should sit just inside shoulder width apart. Opening the hands, opening the arms, sorry, interlacing the fingers. And if you're at all worried, you can draw your elbows a little closer together. One of the ways I was taught was to think about the elbows coming in, but the wrists opening out. Um, and that sort of sets your position here. Then taking your knees a little bit further back and lifting the hips with the toes tucked under, so you're on your tiptoes or the balls of your feet, and your hips are really lifted so they're high up in the air. You've got that little scoop in of the belly, but your shoulders are really over your elbows or there or thereabouts. You're making a little uh, inverted V. You don't want your feet too far back. That's for our next round. Here, this might be enough just to simply hold this position. But if you wish to, you can inhale as you look forward and move your head slightly in front of your hands and exhale as you press through the elbows to move the head back and look towards your feet. So you're moving in your neck as well. Scoop the belly in, inhaling forward, exhaling back, inhaling forward, exhaling back. Apparently it looks like a dolphin cresting a wave. <laughs> Hence the name. This is number five. If you can, do 10. Don't let your elbows come apart though. So if your elbows begin to slip, then stopping, bringing them back together or towards each other. And then starting again. This is seven, six, six, yeah. Seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then resting again in child's pose, or if you prefer, you can rest upright because the head has been full of blood. It's like an inverted posture. And I quite like to rest upright and then take my hands behind my body, interlace the fingers and just open the chest a little bit. So those spaces that have been really strongly working, I get to release, maybe release through the arms. Oh, nice. So if you find uh, dolphin pose really challenging, you can do this with your knees down, just as we did with the press up position. And likewise, if you find the press up with the knees down super easy, you can lift your knees off the floor and do full press ups, no problem at all. So to do dolphin with the knees down, it's exactly the same. You just leave your knees down, maybe giving yourself a little bit of extra space, still have that tip up of the tailbone and moving the chest backwards and forwards over the arms. And there's no point in doing the full version if it is too challenging, because you'll just give yourself an opportunity for injury. Whereas if you build your strength gradually over time and progress, then you will come to it strong, and vibrant and able. And it will build your confidence rather than making you feel like you can't do something. So take the modification when you need it. Always, I do. Okay. So our final version of the dolphin, again, can be done with the knees down if needed. We're going to cross our arms at the elbows and then do the reverse cross. So we want the awkward way or the way we wouldn't normally choose. And placing the elbows down on the floor, again, trying to keep the elbows quite close to each other, interlacing your fingers the awkward way. You're going to move your feet back a lot further this time, so that when you come up into your uh, triangle position here, your inverted V, you are a much wider obtuse angle <laughs> with your bottom anyway. And then still tipping up in the bottom, still lengthening in the neck, pressing into the forearms. Again, inhaling forward. And you're more into a plank pose here and then exhaling back. Inhaling forward, firm in the belly and the buttocks, exhaling back. And again, aiming for around about 10 of these or the same number as you did on the previous round which would be nice and balanced. And you might be able to feel some people who are stronger in their core find these easier than the ones that are just uh, using the upper body a little bit more. 
So observe that. Don't let your elbows come apart. Mine are beginning to drift. So I'm just going to bring them in a touch. Very good. I can't remember how many I've done. So I'm going to do three more. If you feel that you've done your 10 already, that's okay. Just resting. Very good. And when you're ready, you can rest into child's pose. Maybe for a moment, that's quite nice. Just releasing the hands back down to the, to the heels, if you can, to the ankles. In this uh, more turned in, smaller child's pose, not extended. You can do it with your knees together or apart as you choose, but try to make sure that you don't feel anything in the back of your neck. So the weight of the body carried by the legs more than the forehead. Releasing the shoulders, really feeling that space between the shoulder blades. Oh, letting go of all of the effort there. I can feel this through the backs of my ribs, which is lovely. Softening the shoulders towards the floor, releasing the effort in the hands, the arms, the chest and back, the face. Let go of your jaw. Soften your forehead. Take a deep breath in. Sigh out. And when you're ready, you can roll up to an upright position. So this completes our strengthening practice for the arms and upper body. There are lots of other things that you could do. This is just a little short practice for you. Do be sure to stretch out in a way that makes you feel good. So if you're feeling this in your upper back, and crossing the arms at the elbows. Remember to do it both ways. Let the elbows be heavy. Take a few deep breaths. Very good. And then same thing on the other side. If you feel it into your shoulders and the sides of your neck, you can interlace your fingers behind you, roll the shoulder blades towards you and then slide the left hand to the back of the right hip and just tuck that elbow in. And we're moving away from the left shoulder. So turning to the right and coming back to center, maybe right ear to right shoulder. And that should feel nice. Feel free to hold these for as long as you like before working to the opposite side. And making sure you tuck in the left elbow when you turn to the left. And when you take the left ear to the left shoulder. And as I say, you can hold them for a lot longer than that if you wish to. Remember to roll out your wrists. Keep anything moving if you get that delayed onset muscle stiffness or soreness over the next few days. Uh, and that's good practice for uh, all these movements as well. I hope you enjoyed the practice. I hope you begin to feel your strength and uh, develop it gradually, not expecting it to happen all at once. And I'll see you for another practice again soon. Namaste.